of your business, sir? My name is C. Allen Johnson. My business is CompuMedic.com. Okay. Earlier last week, we would have spoke, um, spoken about technology, computers, our concerns. What off the bat are you um, trying to tell us as far as technology in the Bahamas is concerned? What is your mm. concern? Well, one of the things is that we have the Bahamas being one of the most technologically prepared as far as infrastructurally with the internet backbone that Cable Bahamas has put in and what uh, BTC has put in. One of my concerns is that the Bahamas has failed to begin to utilize this backbone to embrace what is called a knowledge-based economy. We somehow begin to have what is called a, a reliance on the tourism product, whereas we talk about going for globalization as well as embracing, embracing the global marketplace, the global economy. And I feel that the Bahamas within itself is not utilizing the full potential, especially in these economic times, to embrace the new earning potential that's there through via the internet. Right. As, as far as security, when I spoke to you, one of my major concerns was that uh, I heard a few people speak on the, uh, the phishing that's going on, which such as uh, Oswald Brown, um, uh, Dr. Patterson, and others who have been affected, but not having a complete understanding of how it's accomplished. You know, we hear that the police is going to investigate it, but it goes beyond the borders of the Bahamas in the way these things are being accomplished. Right. Okay, let's go back now. Are you saying then that outside of tourism, there is so much more that we can do to perhaps make our monies? What are you saying with regards to technology? How can we benefit from well, that? Well, the, the technology is the language of the new generation. Essentially, based in the Bahamas right here, we have about four different generations of people that is actually living right now within the Bahamas. We have the baby bombers, which is born between 1940 and 1960. We have Generation X, which is 1960 to 1980, which is such, such as myself. Then we have Generation Y, which is 1980 to 2000. Then there's a convergence of those, which is called the millennials. And basically, where language, where technology is their language. You know, you have individuals where if they was to leave their cellular home, they suffer this anxiety of they have to go back because I may miss a call, I may miss something. And, you know, we, we live in a society of emails, texting, uh, uh, telecommunications, and it's all converging as one. Now, what happens is since it's their language and education and other things, especially in business, we talk about going out of the borders of the Bahamas and we talk about the various uh, agreements such as EPA and, and the other agreements that is coming. But what we have failed to do is we have failed to prepare ourselves to uh, get this global market. We have maintained the approach as if we have to physically go to those particular locations when technology could take us there now, even before we sign these agreements. Mm -hmm. How can you assist in that area? What is it that you do that you think you can bring to the table in doing all of that? Well, over the last year, I have worked with a group of individuals where we have worked towards developing a technology empowerment center here in Freeport, Grand Bahama. And it's our goal, we're looking at maybe launching before the end of the year, where we're going to have a facility with about 200 computers. And essentially what we want to do is we want to bring our people within the Bahamas, a small, so the public service, as well as within the schools, into what is called IC3 certification, which is internet uh, computing competencies, uh, core competencies. And essentially, basically, what it does is make sure they have full understanding of what a computer is, use of the computer, use of the internet, and it's uh, all of the different uh, advantages of using it. And then we are looking at moving towards bringing that within the classroom into what is called an e-learning environment. Uh, we're looking at establishing partnering with a school to put in whiteboards and uh, uh, computers on every desk and having the teachers, and this is why we, when we say the public service as well as the BUT, is having a one or a few or even a school of teachers prepared in such a manner that they can become the uh, pilot for this new learning thing. And so what it is, is we believe in what's called a 24-hour learning, that the classroom never ends. From the time the students come, they, it's 24 hours a day. Uh, students, even if they miss classes, can actually log in and see what's going on in the classes. They can have interactive participation with the teachers and a host of different things that's available uh, is that it, when we talk about students have certain disadvantages, we have a learning process called ADAPT, whereas essentially you have, let's say we're teaching the sixth grade. Within that sixth grade class of 40 students, you may have uh, a few of them that's in seventh grade level, a few in sixth grade level, some in sixth grade level, some in fourth grade level. 
while the computer doesn't, as a teacher, just teaches at a particular sixth grade level, the computer differentiates each one of them and teaches them at their level. Mm -hmm. It begins to move the student from the fourth grade level to the fifth grade level, and then it takes the students in the fifth grade level, move them to the sixth, and those within the seventh could be identified and, no, and, the, and the, educa the educators can be uh, informed, and we could move to maybe the same uh, 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 the school programs where we have magnet schools or gear their interests and particular interests for advanced placement within those classes. Mm -hmm. And so you don't teach the whole class assuming that all 40 of them are on the same learning level. So the teachers basically have their syllabus and the computer basically gauge the level they are, try to bring those behind up and those that's ahead, we try to advance them even further. Do you think that this, um, what you're trying to do, it can benefit in the sense that it helps this growth? And are we ready for that? I think we're more than ready because if you if you look at our, 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 the what our kids do already today, they are engrossed within the internet. Everything they do from YouTube to Facebook to uh, MySpace and all of these different things. These things are not more than just communication. These are learning tools. And so they are receptive. The problem is that we may have what we call the baby boomers who are either afraid to or have chosen not to move into this new millennial, this new method of learning, new method of teaching. And it's basically preparing them for the future, you believe? Yeah, the future. See, you talk about the future. I think the future is now. Mm -hmm. Because it is, you know, when you look at the amount of money that the uh, Bill Gates Foundation is investing in, uh, in, the, in globalization, having internet around the world, when you look at uh, the, what Microsoft's company himself is doing as far as putting a, debt not, a dot .NET platform, making sure that internet is in all the classrooms, all remote areas, rural places, Africa, everywhere else. And so in the future, if you take into perspective that uh, in the year 2002, the information produced in the year 2002 was equal to all the information produced since the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. in one year, compiled within 2002. And so when you begin to look at that right now, the information that, I was, that my kids learn today is six to seven times what I had to learn when I was in school 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so when we begin to be, so if we begin to use 19th century teaching techniques, trying to embrace 20th century, 21st century information, which is moving every 18 months. Every information you learn today is, obs is, is obsolete in 18 months. Mm -hmm. And so here this, we're spending two years teaching them six months of information that'll be obsolete by the time we finish teaching them. Wow. If there is something that the government would have to do to engage in this and to get this going, what would their step be? What would they uh, have to do? Well, what happens is a decision has to be made. If it, uh, and we often hear that it's expensive. To me, it's expensive for us not to do it. Because what happens is, if, as we begin to uh, compete in the global marketplace, what happens is that you have, you, have, you have China, you have India, you have the Philippines, and all these other countries, and you have Costa Rica, that are beginning a rapid uh, rollout of technology-based, and what we, what, what we basically call a knowledge-based economy. And these are the very countries that we are going to be competing with. And so here it is that if we don't prepare now, today, you know, if we say we're going to put this even off for two years, we will be five years behind in, the, in that learning curve, in that learning process. You know, and it's not impossible. So what happens is what we have to do, what the government has to do, the government has to take a, a, a uh, uh, proactive approach and begin to look at what we can do. Even if we don't do a full rollout, clearly we can uh, begin to take an aggressive short-term approach, be it three, four, five years, to embrace this whole rollout. And then what we can do is we don't look at the cost. We look at what, what uh, we use the expression uh, value for money and says, okay, if, we, if it costs this, what is our value for money? What do we get out of it? And if we have a productive workforce, so we have a plan, the group of us, we, have, we call it Bahamas 2020, call it 2020 vision. And this is why we're looking at rolling out before the end of the year. Because we are saying that beginning at the end of this year, in 12 years, we, would, we could have our com first, from going into first grade, we could have our first graduating class that has been technologically enriched for the entire 12 year period. And we're talking about students graduating, we talk about the IDB, the uh, International Baccalaureate Degree Program, the IBD. And we could actually embrace those learning methods and put those in our class, not necessarily those platforms, but just using technology where the kids can, the, our children can have the information readily available for them and utilize them today, and that 
puts them years ahead of our competitors. Right. So what was the biggest? 